Recently, there has been some controversy here in Victoria about the government being extended special powers during this state of emergency for COVID. I can finally reveal to you the true agenda behind those special powers. It's because Dan Andrews, for so many years, has wanted an opportunity to put into place a law that has just been bugging him that it isn't there. And that law states that for every tech YouTuber or maker YouTuber, they have to have some form of illuminated logo, structure or design to go on the wall behind them that they can feature as a bit of a branding element in their videos. And without that, am I even a tech YouTuber? Now, I want to make sure I comply with this new law when it comes in. So I thought the easiest thing to do would be to start with just you know, taking my logo and laser cutting it maybe onto some MDF. And then what I could do is mount it on some standoffs over a backing board and put RGB LEDs along the back of it so that, you know, it's back illuminated. It will look pretty funky, be very easy, and wouldn't take very long. I made a bit of a template out of uh, core flute here just to see what it would look like. And then I thought, no, that's taking the lazy way out. I think we can do better than that. Over the years, I've accumulated quite a few PCBs I'm never going to use. Things like bare mini panels and PCBs for products that are obsolete. Well, this version of it is obsolete. I'm never going to assemble this. I've got hundreds and hundreds of them. So how about we make a logo using PCBs? And then I thought maybe instead of just doing the classic elevated logo, maybe I would make it a negative space logo. What I can do is lay out PCBs into the shape that makes a panel bigger than my logo and then have the logo itself cut out. So the logo is the space and then backlight it. That way we've still got the classic backlit logo illumination sort of thing that every YouTuber has to have but it's just got a little bit more flair. Now my vague and ill-considered plan is to take a bunch of PCBs and basically line them like this so that they form a panel that is big enough to cover the logo. And then what I'll do is I'll take another set of PCBs and sort of overlap them. I might put them in a slight diagonal like this, have them sticking over the edge, and tile them so that they cover the whole area and araldite them together somehow. Like basically, it's like making plywood, but we're going to be making it out of PCBs. Then what I can do is put it into my CNC machine and use that to cut out the shape of the logo. Now as far as ideas go, this one probably rates somewhere between stupid and bloody stupid. But hey, that's what happens when you watch a tech YouTuber trying to be creative. I mean, that makes it your fault, right? Now I just did something very unusual and thought ahead. I don't do that very often. But I realized that I need to make sure that whatever I build is going to fit on my CNC machine. This logo ends up being a bit too big. I think it's about 460 mils across or so. And what I can fit on the machine and still reach with the head is probably more like 370 millimeters from side to side. That's about the most I can fit on there. So I'm going to have to scale the logo down a bit to make it fit. So I'll just make the biggest panel that I can that is going to fit inside this space. Now, after almost an entire minute of grueling calculations, I figured out that if I use 40 of these particular PCBs and make a grid of 5 by 8, then I will have myself a solid base that is just small enough that it will fit inside the CNC machine. Then I can layer the other PCBs on top and make a strong structure. And I'm going to use this core flute as well, so that later when I come to cut this out with the CNC machine, this will form part of the waste board and I can cut part way into the core flute. Right, the first layer of PCBs is on and the glue is dry and this turned out pretty well. This was easy, it was pretty quick to put all the pieces on and that's because what I did was just use all of the same size PCB. The tricky part is going to come next because what I want to do for the top layer, which is the layer that will be visible, is to use a variety of different PCBs. So I want to make it visually interesting and maybe try to showcase a couple of the PCBs that I've worked on over the years that are kind of cool. So that means that they're going to be all different sizes and tiling them is going to be really tricky. I want to have them overlapping with the edge so that you don't see so much of the yellow PCBs 
and have them at a bit of an angle. So making them all fit is going to be a bit of a pain. So what I've done is printed out the logo and I've cut it out and I'm going to use this to draw the logo on the yellow and then what I can do is use that to figure out where I can make all of these fit and the area that's going to be cut out I can use that as like a, a slop area where things don't have to fit properly so wherever there is a mismatch I will try to get it into that logo area. So now that I've scribbled all over this base PCB in the area where the logo will be cut out, what it indicates here is the areas that I don't really need to care about. So if I've got a few PCBs and they're all different shapes and there's going to end up inevitably being a gap between them somewhere, as long as I can get that gap to line up where the logo is, then it doesn't matter. Like if I've got a couple that are different sizes like this and you know there's some strange space between them, if that fits over the bit that's going to be cut out by the CNC machine, it doesn't matter. I've just got to make sure that I've got solid coverage over the yellow areas. Okay, I figured out an arrangement of PCBs that doesn't look too bad. I'm not entirely happy with it because there are still some little gaps like around between PCBs where the yellow shines through and there is this board which has got slots in it so you can see the yellow through it. But overall, it's about the best I can do. And if anybody complains about the yellow shining through, and files it as a bug, I'm just going to say, it's a feature. It was always meant to be like that. But I finally got it done. So now we have this laminated panel, which seems fairly strong. It's one layer of core flute, one layer of the yellow PCBs, and then one layer of the blue PCBs. Now, I don't really know how well this is going to go in the CNC machine. I have a worry that these PCBs are going to rip off once the cutter starts going through it. Hopefully it'll hang together. Now I need to generate the tool paths and set it up on the CNC machine. Are you still here? <laughs> this has gone wrong in so many ways that it's embarrassing and I don't even know if I can count them all. To start with, I was setting this up for a 2mm mill and I ended up breaking it. So I thought, stuff it, I'll just put in a 6mm mill and that's okay, it'll still work alright. So I started running it with the same program that I'd set up for the 2mm mill and the problem is that the feeds and the speeds were wrong so as you can see along here it started burning it actually caught some of the PCB on fire so I quickly turned down the speed so that it would start making chips instead of just grinding its way through and that was okay for a while it worked its way around <laughs> the fire went out and then the whole waste board started moving sideways because these bolts didn't seem to be screwed down properly. Now they were previously, so they must have worked themselves loose over time and because of the force sideways, the whole thing started moving and it lost its position. So then I had to tighten up the bolts, re-zero the machine because everything had moved and begin again. But then it started moving the whole panel and it ripped it off the waste board. And as you can see, it started popping off bits of PCB and then it buried itself into the thing and you can see here it's run off course. So the whole thing is a total disaster at this point. Now I think this is actually still recoverable and I have a plan for how to do it. But in the short term, what I'm going to do is take out this bit of PCB panel and I'm going to make a version that is just made out of core flute. So I'll just put in like a single flute cutter, chop it out of core flute. I can't do it on a laser cutter because it's too big to go in the laser cutter. and my laser cutter is broken right now. But at least then I can make something that will physically represent it. I can even spray paint it blue and make it look like it's you know, not too ugly. And then I can supplant it later with the PCB version once I get this cut properly and patch it with some other bits of PCB. Well, cutting this out of core flute went much better. I just used a little single flute, uh, two millimeter mill and cut it out. It left some rough ragged bits around it uh, but I've trimmed that up a little bit with a scalpel and I just hit it with some blue spray paint. This is not quite what I was wanting. I wanted the PCBs for this layer but for now this is the same dimensions as the PCB panel and I can use this as a starting point and then just fit the other one over the top of this or replace it when the time comes. So now what I'm going to do is turn this over, grab some RGB LEDs and I'm going to stick this around the back of it so that it will illuminate from behind. Now there was yet another mistake here. 
when I ordered this RGB LED strip, I just searched for RGB LED strip, didn't even pay any attention, didn't even cross my mind that I needed to order a dressable RGB LED strip. So this is just uh, common ground, I think. No, common 12 volts and then ground for red, green and blue. So all of the LEDs are going to be the same color. I can't do different colors on the different LEDs, but that's okay. I've got a little bit of a solution for how I can control this easily. We'll get back to that. For now, I'm just going to stick this onto the back. To get this LED strip to fit around the logo, I had to cut it into little segments, stick it down, and then solder jumper wires between each of the segments. There are four connections. There is the common 12 volts, and then one ground connection each for red, green, and blue. So if you connect that ground to ground, that color illuminates. Now, th this brings us to something which is actually technically interesting. Most of this video has just been me screwing around and making mistakes. But there is a, um, an interesting little thing down here. These LED strips are not addressable. If you use a typical addressable RGB LED strip, it'll have something like a WS2812B LED. Now, that is actually just a regular RGB LED with a driver chip built directly into it. But you can also get the chip separately. That's what's on this module here. This module is called a Free NFET 3. I designed this a few years ago, and what it does is use a WS2811, which is the driver chip that is typically contained inside something like a WS2812, but it's just the driver chip itself. It's not part of an LED. And what I did was connect it up with some high power MOSFETs, because what I wanted to be able to do was control high power loads as if they are an addressable LED. So you could be switching up to 60 amps of power through this, which could be something like really high power LEDs. Maybe you've got like 60 watt LEDs, RGB LEDs, or traffic lights, or uh, you could switch relays. What I wanted to be able to do was take loads that you would normally switch with a transistor and switch those as if they are addressable RGB LEDs. And it just turned out to be perfect for this job. So I've got the three channels and then the three MOSFETs are switching the three different color channels. Now I've also added this little 5 volt regulator. So what I can do is bring 12 volts in on this wire. This is the main power line. I get 12 volts coming into that. The raw 12 volts goes to the RGB LED strip and then a common ground going across to the module over here. But I get 5 volts coming out of the regulator to power the D1 Mini. And then from there, the D1 Mini is sending data to the module to control the LEDs. So effectively, from a software point of view, this whole LED strip looks like a single addressable LED, which sounds a bit silly, but it basically means that what I can do is address it using the exact same driver software as you would use for something like a NeoPixel uh, or maybe something like Fast LED Library. And it also means it's supported by Tasmoda. So right now I've got Tasmoda running on this D1 Mini. And I've set up the output specifically to tell it that it's a WS2812. And that is controlling the module, which then controls all of the LEDs. Now my plan for this is to have this mounted so that it's separated from a backing board with a bit of a gap. And then the LEDs will shine onto the backboard, so you won't see them directly you'll just see the effect of the illumination. So I designed and 3D printed some little standoffs. It's got a flat part on one end because I'm going to be gluing this onto the back. What I've done is worked out the mounting locations and that will just glue on like that. And there is a little hole in the front and then I can just put a screw in through the backing board. So I've got another piece of core flute here and I've set it up with all of these mounting posts in the correct locations. So the idea is that this will sit on top and then I'm going to just use a bit of glue and glue that onto those stakes and everything should sit where it needs to be. So now I've stuck the logo onto the standoffs. You can see that it's separated there. There's a bit of a gap between the logo and the backing board. All of the LEDs are on the back and I've gone super high tech on the back. I've just got a bit of electrical uh, cable there and some tape. Here's the power cable. So if we plug 12 volts into this, the D1 Mini will start up and be ready to accept commands. So I can now stick this up on the wall. At the moment it's just running through that pattern that sort of cycles through random colors. 
And now at last, after all of those screw-ups, it's finally hanging on the wall. It's not at all what I was expecting to do. This is really just like a really cheap, crappy facsimile of my original intention. But hey, we did manage to get a little bit of electronical stuff into this, playing around with the WS2811 and that little driver module, which is pretty cool. I designed that four years ago and I've only ever used it a few times, but sometimes like this, it's really useful. Now that you've seen how bad my artistic skills are, I want you to show me up. Go out there and make something awesome.